Open your Bibles to the book of James. That's our study Bible book on Sunday. We've been in a passage. Actually, the content, the context of it is 19 through uh, 27. And so we've broken it down. We've looked at 19, 21, 20, 21, then 22, 23, 24, 25. And I want to come back to this uh, verse in 25 with you this morning. The one who looks intently at the perfect law of liberty. Every time I see that, it looks like an oxymoron to me. <laughs> the perfect law of liberty. I mean, law is bondage and liberty is freedom. And it, I go like, oh, how's that thing? And it must drive liberals and uh, legalists nuts, don't you imagine? The it must drive legalists nuts to read that. But anyhow, but the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, has not become a forgetful here. Remember, that was the subject of verse 23 and 24. Has not become a forgetful here. Remember also, the word hearer is uniquely different. I, I, made a, I made a big point of that last week with you. That's an unusual Greek word for that. And we talked about that. Uh, don't become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. This man shall be blessed in what he does. So we're going to pause for a moment. Uh, let me suggest to you that the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't study it in carnality, nor can you apply it. Evidence of carnality in your life would be at least three categories of sin. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, and avert sins. These sins must be confessed in silence and privacy to restore you to fellowship with the ministry of the Holy Spirit so that he can teach you the truth of the Word of God. It's a spiritual book. It's got to be read and it's got to be learned and lived by the same principle, spirituality. Carnality won't work either way. Spirituality works both ways. So I'm going to give you a moment of silence, then I'm going to have Joe open up with a word of prayer. Take a moment, so confess sin, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins. For those who are visiting with us on the Internet, this applies to you as well. And uh, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's certainly your responsibility as a believer priest, whether you're visiting with us by automobile or by Internet. I'm going to give you a moment of silence, and then Joe, just after a little bit of silence, you open in prayer. Well, <clears throat> when we look at our subject matter today, we're going to look, look, the, the important thing of introduction to this is content and, and evocative address. I can't tell you how many people uh, preach this sermon to unbelievers. And uh, I don't care. You can do that if you want to, but it, you take it out of context to do that. So it's very important. Verses 19 through 25, we know who they're addressed to. We know that because of verse 19. This you know, my beloved brethren... That pretty much takes care of that issue, right? Takes care of that issue. And so this is a, a very important lesson to the, to the church about what the perfect law of liberty is. The perfect law of liberty is the subject matter. For the one who looks intently at the perfect law of liberty and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, which has been the subject earlier, this man shall be blessed in what he does. This one. Really, this one, meaning the one who is a, an effectual doer of the perfect law of liberty. And so we're going to talk about that uh, under three points in the first hour. Uh, point number one says, we will begin by examining our lesson text by a sequence. Now, we always look for markers. Markers are... They can be in many forms, and I talk a great deal about this because I want you to become students of the Bible when you read it. Let's say you got to give a devotion. Markers are really important because they, they tell you point one, point two, point three. Now, the three markers that are important to us, however, are in the Greek. 
And sometimes that's a good thing for us that know the Greek. And so I want, and these are three aorist participles, three aorist, uh, aorist participles that move you in sequence and tell you something about the perfect law of liberty. Now, the perfect law of liberty, that James is the only guy that really identifies this this way. He's talking about the word of God. He's talking about the word of God and what our view ought to be towards studying it. Now, normally we think of the Bible as the word of God, the Bible or the word of God. James puts a twist to this thing and just makes it really important how he says the word of God. He says, when the word of God, when you hear it, in, and this is a key word there, hearer, when you hear the word of God and you hear it in this way, that you, you, you listen, you, you hear it, you're intently listening to understand it, to believe it, and apply it to your life. When he says a hearer, that's the goal, is, the goal is to become a doer of it. Not just a learner of the word of God, 1 Corinthians 8, 1. Not just a learner, not a person that just wants the knowledge of it, but wants the experience of the knowledge of it in his personal life where God does what he says. And when that happens, he says, now you understand the perfect law of liberty. Okay? And so that's important. And that, so there are three, there are three aorist of participles. I want to point them out because James did. The first one, the, the verse uh, 25 begins with the word but. That's day in contrast to verses 22, 23, and 24. Th this is a conjunction of contrast. And this is really important because he's telling you to understand verse 25, you need to understand 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, which we have gone through in great detail. The word but, and so it refers, the word refers to what I just said, the last thing I said in context. The word but, the word but when used in contrast, this conjunction of contrast tells you, the subject I started on 19 through 27, what I started to get 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, the last points I'm making in context is how this is contrasted. So let's go back to verse 22, 23, and 24. He says, but prove yourself doers of the word, not mere hearers or hearers only who delude themselves who delude themselves. If you're only a hearer and not a doer, and what he's talking about is the faith cycle. The faith cycle. You hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Then you take that by, by understanding it into a belief system. That's believing. That's Hebrews uh, 4, 2 that says, I've heard it, I understand it, and I believe it as the truth of God's word. The second half, that's the hearer side. The doer side of this is application to completion. This is where the faith rest technique comes in. The faith tech, this is where uh, Psalms 27 is important, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be encouraged in your heart. Wait on the Lord. Why? Romans 4.21. God is faithful to do what he promised. God is faithful to do what he's promised. Don't you know I have the wrong, I have the wrong pen. I got a thing up here and I got the wrong pen. I don't have a topper. Well, anyhow, it don't matter. Prove yourself doers of the word, not mirrors. Because if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer, if you're just going, I'm hearing it, I'm believing it, and you're a learner of the word, he says that you, you haven't tapped into the perfect law of liberty. You don't really know how Jesus Christ brings fulfillment. You don't really understand how God brings fulfillment of the word of God by completing what you've heard. You've got to walk application. The A at the bottom of this thing is application. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. You walk by faith, not by sight. See, that's a danger point. That's a red flag. Uh, that's a danger point. And... 
And the, the, what, what is the key is to get it to completion, James 2.22. Now, in Romans 4.21, here's what you're going to learn. Roma, Romans 4.21, that what God has promised, he is able to bring to completion in your life. What he's promised, he's able to do. And when you go through that and you see this on the other side, then what you've just experienced is the perfect law of liberty because he's freed you from things. He's freed you. Listen, Jesus said it this way in John 8, 32. You will know the truth. Now, how are you going to know it? Well, you heard it, but once you experience where God actually does what he says, eh? now you got truth in the experience, not just in the pages of the scripture. You got it. You got it. Absolutely. You know when truth becomes experientially truth is when you share it with other people. I mean, you got, you got a story with it. Now, you can share it from the Word of God, but when you've gone through some experience with it and God has done it, you, 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 you get a Bible verse, but you, gotta, you can sit and talk a half an hour on it or more. That's when you put skin in the game. And skin in the game is what other people are attracted to. Then you can get them in the Word of God. Well, where did you learn that? How did you learn that? How does that work? Now you got several conversations set up with a person. I can only give you half an hour, so let's, let's meet for coffee for a week. Okay? So this word, and so here we have it. But prove it. Then in verse 23 says, if anyone is a hearer, see, he's contrasted these two. He's contrasted them. If anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, He's like a man who looks at his natural face. Remember, that's the word Genesis. This is not the word natural like in 1 Corinthians 2.14. Uh-uh. This is that natural faith. This is the, this is the Greek word for Genesis. This, this means we're talking about the man that God created in Genesis 1.26-27, made in the image and according to the likeness of God, but doesn't have the image of Christ until he gets born again. Now he has the possibility... At birth, he has the image of Christ, and now it's to grow him up into a full-grown man, a mature man in Christ. Come on now. You act like I've never taught this. I mean, this is old school right here. But, but see, that, that's important. That's important to what James is trying to say. Then he says, he introduces us to a word which we have not had in verse 23 and 24. In verse 24, uh, 23, 24, he says, about the hearer who looks, he uses a different Greek word. He used the word kata noel. That's not the word. You can see that's not this word. This has got the word uh, hidden in it, who looks intently or gazing and looking for something. This word means to really be looking for it. What are you looking for? I mean, you got somebody down on his hands and knees, got a suit on with a tie, and you got the words you look at. He said, man, I've lost, I've lost my, my wedding brand somewhere. I can't go home without it. Get down. That's this word. That's this word. This, 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 is, this is a word of that stature when he says, and once he has looked at, at verse, and look intently at the perfect law. Looks intently. That's where we are back to verse 25. Who looks intently? Now, listen to me. Let me ask you. Now, this is pretty intense looking, agreed? Did my illustration help? I, I'm talking about the, girl, the woman down looking for her wedding, band, wedding ring. She doesn't care that she might tear her hose or dirty her garment, her, her new dress. She got to find that ring. All right. That's the word we got here. That's the word we got. One... And, and, and listen, now here's the point. What, what is James trying to get them to look for? What? Yeah, but how, how does he say you can only get it? You can't get it just by hearing, right? Can you get it just by hearing? No, he says no, 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 no. He says no. You, got, you can't be just a hearer only. You also got to be a... Doer of the word. That's the faith cycle. The faith cycle, hearing, believing, applying, completing, back to hearing. That whole faith cycle, one side of that, if you drew a line through it, one side's hearing, the other side's doing. 
doing the word of God. How do you do that? You do it by faith. You do it in the power of the Holy Spirit and by faith. And you bring it out you, until the, the tires hit the pavement. And listen, you might have heard it in an hour. It might take a, a, a year to get it out. How do I know? I mean, it depends on your growth. And, and, but here's his point. His point is, but he who looks intently at the perfect law, see? Now, look at that word. That word looks intently. Aorist active participle, not of singular masculine. That's, that's the first point he's making. You know, what he, you know what he's looking intently about? The word that he's heard and believes? You know what he's looking intently for? The application of it. And when that opportunity comes your way to apply what you heard in the classroom, that you heard and believed, that opportunity is going to come in your life, and it'll come in some of the most strange, unusual ways. Now, if you... If, okay. And you should be looking for the opportunity to apply the word that you've heard and believe because it's, it's coming your way. And, and God is sending it your way so that you could be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. So that's the first point he makes. That's point number one. He said there has to be a change in your life from being a hearer to a doer. Right? Now look, you're half the way home. You're here, here. You're a hearer today. When you become an under, when you understand it and believe it, now there's a second half to be played. It doesn't matter what your stats are in the first half. It's all about winning the ball game. Okay? So that that here's number two. Still in verse 25. And abides in it. And abides in it. And abides in it. Now here's what's interesting. The word chi can be used a lot of different ways. This is an adjunctive chi. An adjunctive chi means that the series of participles, which are all aorist participles, are linked. That's an adjunctive. In other words, when I saw that, I go, okay, that's point one, point two, and point three of information that's important to my life about the perfect law of liberty. That is when the word of God becomes actively in your life creating change. Change is not going to come in your life until you become a hearer and a what? Doer of what the doctrine you heard. That's called the faith cycle in this church. That's what we call the faith cycle. And it's dynamite, and you must learn it, because this is the practical application of the Word of God from the classroom to the life room. And that's important in your life. It's important in my life. This word, chi, as soon as I heard that and saw it as an adjunctive, I went, I wonder if all these are heiress participles. Wouldn't that be something? Because that would give me point one, two, and three. And do you know what? Bingo. See? That's playing bingo. And I went, cha-ching. Now, the word abide, notice that's a power word too. Notice, all, notice the first two words are paras. That's a preposition attached to a key, a key a verb. Para, it means to abide. It's an aorist active participle, which is interesting. You know what it means? Look, here's what it means. Here's the aorist tense. The aorist tense of I heard it at a moment of time I was in the class. I heard the word of God. I heard it clear, clear as a bell. And clear as a bell, I heard it, and I believe it. See, the first word being a hearer means that you listen to learn, and you believe. Now that person looks intently into the perfect law of liberty to see God bring that to, to, to fruition. 
Because God will do what he promised to a great. Over here's the promise. Over here's the performance. Come on now. Over on this side, the hearing and believing side, right, is where you get the promise. Over on the doer side is where you get the performance. You bring that, you bring that word of God out in your life and put it on the table and God will serve it. Did to 5,000. He'll serve it. And so this is important, aorist act participle. So here's the first step. The first step is you've got to look intently at the perfect law of liberty. You, the second point is you've got to bite it. And that, that is moving it from the hearer side, moving it from the hearer side to the, to the doer side. That, then the, the word of God becomes a perfect law of liberty because you will hear the truth and the truth will set you free. Ding, ding. Do you know how revolutionary this could be in your life if you could get this principle down? You don't want to just study the Word of God. You want to have the Word of God become the perfect law of liberty in your life and free you up. Okay. 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 Here's the third point. Not having become a forgetful hearer. See, that's verse 23 and 24. See the word having become with a negative ook. Having, not having become. That's an aorist middle participle. The, the middle, though, is historical. It's a grammatical because that's a deponent verb. It ends in an O-M-A-I. So, we, we look at that as a historical, a, a grammatical historical rather than a reflexive. N not having become, in other words, he's trying to, he's carried this along with genomai, which is a deponent verb. Not having become, aorist participle, a forgetful, what? Here. In other words, I heard the word of God, I understood the word of God, I believed it. Now it came time to apply it, right? Application and completion. And what did I do? Uh, oh, shoot. Where did I put my keys? Well, I have to track. Let's see. What did I do last? I had them at lunch. See what I mean? But that, listen... There's something about this. What I just illustrated to you was not a, not a person who wanted to be a forgetful pe person. Agreed? How do I know that? Because what was I doing? As soon as I realized I had my keys, I started searching for them. I was highly motivated because I didn't walk, walk, walk home, and I didn't know how to start my car without a key. I would have to talk to a criminal. And so, look, and so I'm looking intently for them. I'm looking intently. Are you, are you with me? I'm looking intently for my keys. Yes. See, this is a whole process. This is a wonderful whole process. Not having become a forgetful hearer. Going out like, well, I don't care. A forgetful hearer. Because, listen, you heard well, but then you chose. It's a choice to forget. I lost my keys. What are we going to do? We're going to search like crazy until we find them. And even when I can't find them, I'm not going to be good for here because i got to find another set of keys, and then i got to replace them. Then I, I'm worried about somebody who's got my keys out there Go around the parking lot going, poop, 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 Or I wonder if Ron will come back to Chick-fil-A. Maybe I can drive his car home. There it is, right? Thank you, Ron. Apparently, you got another set of keys, but I've got the old ones. <clears throat> Not having become a forgetful hearer, but in contrast to a forgetful hearer, be an effectual doer. The word in the Greek language is ergon. It means the word work. And almost all the time, ergon is going to be translated work, except in this case, 
He's not talking about that. He's talking about the effectual doer. He's talking about the listener that's going to bring it out and put it into the application of his life by faith. You're going to hear it by faith. You're going to apply it by faith. That's the faith cycle. And so this is a wonderful concept. And so the English word effectual is a perfect word for ergon in context. The word in the English effectual because... <coughs> Because listen, it means, listen to what the effectual mean. I looked up in the collegiate dictionary. Bill, the one I still have from college. Do you know how far that goes back? <laughs> Thank you, Bill. It means to produce. This is why, this is why they use this word. They used, instead of word, the saying work, he, the English changed that word to effectual because it means to produce a desired effect. And that's exactly what he's talking about. To bring what you heard and believed into your life, either under normal, simple conditions or under extreme stress. Boom, there it is. How about that? Because it'll come out. Either it'll come out in really good situations where you lost your keys and you go like, oh, let me think, let me think, and you go like, oh, wait, it's in my pocket. See, that's not a bad one. Right? Got it. Your heart got pumping a little bit, but not bad. da 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 it's when you can't find it, and you look everywhere, and you backtrack yourself for the last two hours, and you can't find it. That's when your heart starts racing. And then you can't find it two hours, five hours, <laughs> and then somebody drives home with your car. Having not, forget, having, having not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. Then he gives a wonderful promise. They say, if you'll go the faith cycle with this thing, he gives you a promise. This one, what one? Now, answer that. Get, wh wh this one, what? This one, what? Hey, that's a gate question. I can tell you right now, that's a gate question. Joe, somebody told me the other day, I know what's going to happen to you, Ron Adam, when you get to heaven. There, Jesus himself is going to stop you at the gate. And he's going to say, hey, big boy. I've heard you say, you're not good. this would probably be a gate question. I got 26,000 of them here. <laughs> I want to hear them. I'm still going to get in, but it may take me a while. He said, well, he's going to get me. And where's this effectual doer, Al? Where's this effectual doer? Here's the promise, this one. Who is that? The effectual doer. The one who has heard and is ready to apply it. Right? The effectual doer, this one, that's a demonstrative pronoun of emphasis, by the way. That's, a, that's used as a subject for emphasis. This one, the one he's just talked about, this one will be, absolute status quo verb of existence, will be blessed. Now look at you're missing this. What did I say I mean was? I just said it. What is I mean? An absolute status quo verb of what? Yeah, that's what it is. What, what was the first word of, what was the A? Absolute. The believer who clicks into the perfect law of liberty out of the word of God, who becomes a hearer and doer, no matter, what the, no matter what the circumstances, whether everything is going good and you apply it, da, 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 or whether it's your life has been torn apart and you're, nothing could get worse than this day. <laughs> Just depends. But listen, you know where your liberty is? 
I don't care what's going on. I don't care what circumstance your life is. You know what, you know what can go on in your life? Freedom. Freedom. I said to a person the other day, just crushed him the life. Oh, my life. Oh, it's just a mess. I said to him, I want you to open your Bibles to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and I want you to read these words in there. You know what that's about? Oh, yeah, you do. The fruit of the Spirit. Right? Love, joy, you know, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all of that. You know, those are all emotional words that people use. You know that? They're relationship words that people use. Peace, love, joy, peace. You know, they're supernaturally produced in you. They're not dependent on your flesh. Did you know that? The fruit of what? Fruit of the what? You know, that, that means you can get it anytime you want, but you can't get it from the flesh. Can't get it from the flesh. If you're looking at the flesh to get it, whether yours or someone else, you're going to be disappointed because you're looking in the wrong place. And you know what these will do? These are not based on human experience. It's based on divine experience. E e e this is not the love you're talking about. I'm not, I'm not loved. This is not the peace. I'm not, I don't feel peace. This is not the joy. I don't feel joy. This is the joy that overcomes every obstacle in your life. This is the peace that passes all understanding. The, the, we're talking about stuff that the human mind cannot conceive nor has ever experienced apart from God. Do you know that? Then why do you sit around and complain about it? Do you have access to the Holy Spirit? Where does he live? Outside, out there someplace? Does the Holy Spirit not live? Does that, is, is what, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 don't work for you? The Holy Spirit, and listen, makes, makes your body something unique and different only because he dwells there. When he takes up residence, your body becomes a what? Temple, Temple of what? Temple of God. So what's happened when you get all bent out of shape because you don't have love, you don't have joy, you don't have peace, you don't have patience, you don't have kindness. You don't have... When you step outside here, guess what happened? You need to get back in the temple. You need to get back in the temple where the Holy Spirit is because he'll produce the stuff in your life that will, that will absolutely meet your emotional intimate needs. And you're looking at all the wrong places and you're getting all the wrong stuff. You know why? Because you're a hearer of the word, not a doer. You're a hearer of the word, not a doer. You're looking, you're looking for that love relationship, that peace relationship, that joy relationship outside of where you already are and have access to. No cost to this one here. A lot of cost to that one out there. You know, when a guy says, I love you, watch out. Oh, yeah, girls, watch out. You know, when God says, I love you, no conditions. No conditions. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world in the worst state of condition they could possibly believe. And the moment he believes that God, Jesus died for his sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, God, because he loves us so much, and because it's such an impossible thing for people to grasp, puts the love of God at the moment we get saved, he pours out the love of God within our hearts. Romans 5.5. 5. To begin to tell us that I'm talking about 
emotional experiences of your soul that are nothing. The world will use these terms and cannot, cannot, cannot give it to you. You don't have credit. <laughs> your credit isn't good. You can never get it from the world. You cannot get any of these from the world. The world uses these terms and can't produce. You have to be in the temple. You got to go inside to get this. You have to go inside, not outside. You got to go inside. And so, point number two, the implanted word of God which we talked about in verse 21, the implanted word of God becomes the perfect law of liberty when it completes the phase cycle. You got to be here and a what? Sure. Got to be here and a... Yes, you do. Here is not enough and a doer is not enough. You got to have that combination working in your life. And so I put this on your paper. We go clockwise with it, hearing, believing, applying, and completing. And on that, on that circle that you see that written, you ought to write the word in the middle of it, write the word implanted word. When the word is implanted in you by hearing, believing, and understanding, God wants it to be cycled. Not just a hearer, right? But a doer of the perfect word. On the hearer side, is it bona fide to be a hearer? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's the first stage. Hearing and believing is the first stage. The second and most important stage to the hearing side of it is the completing of it, is the doer side of it, being a, an effectual doer of the word. Bring it on out. Bring it on out. And, and what's he warned you about? He warns you about this. Don't be a forgetful. A forgetful here who's one who has heard and believes and doesn't apply doesn't apply. When everything's going good, we apply it. When everything gets all cranky up and gets under stress and pressure, we become a forgetful hearer often. Okay? So on the one side over here, you've got the promise. On the hearer side, you've got the promise. On the, on the doer side, you've got performance. The Word of God, it's all about getting it by faith into the arena of life. Not just the classroom, but the life room. That's important. So he says to abide. What's the goal of abiding? He says, you heard the word of God, abide in it, right? Abide in it for what? Abide in it. Abide in it. Abide in it is interesting. In the, in the English language, they either translate the word abide or remain or continue or persevere. Often you will find this word in the Greek language describe perseverance. Sometimes remain or abide. What's the difference? Pressure. Pressure. Persevere. Does that tell you pressure? Persevere. Persevere. And so this word is used that way in the Greek language. Um, and, and what's an effectual doer? Producing a desired effect. Now, when you read, not, not now, but when you read 1 Peter 1, 10 through 12, the word look intently is used with angels who are watching us in the application of the word of God in our life. Angels who are spectators watching the angelic conflict play out in our lives in the real game of life. And that word, look intently, is used in verse 12 when it says, even angels long to look into these things. I mean, they understand that how important it is not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer of it to complete that faith cycle. And they watch us. You know why? Because human volition is the key to the angelic conflict. That's what they're watching. I mean, that's how, this, that's how the game is scored. That's how it's scored. Let me conclude. When I heard, when I hear the phrase, perfect law of liberty, it sounds, as I said in my introduction, an, or, an oxymoron. And I'm sure that when a legalist 
or a Jewish legalist hears that, it, he, he would go nuts with that. So how does the perfect law of liberty make sense to us? Here's how it does. It's based on grace salvation through the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, I've come not to what? Abolish the law, but to what? Fulfill it. In Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 4, it says, Christ is the end of the law. He's the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So the grace gospel is how the law becomes the perfect law of liberty. A good example of this for you to read is Galatians 3, 15 through 25, where Paul challenges law versus grace. And what he says at verse 13 and 14 is of interest. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. In order that in Christ, in order, purpose, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessings might come to the Gentiles, who are, so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through him. And Paul goes on to this great subject. Now, what is the, what is what is the danger to the what is the danger to the perfect law of liberty? On the one side, you could be a good hearer and then forget. And that would be a great danger, wouldn't it? When time came to apply, you you did bring it, you didn't bring it out and put it on on the on the on the mark. You became a what? A forgetful hearer. How dangerous is that? You're right? And so it's important. Listen, because when you do, you go, either go to the flesh. If you go to the flesh, you go to a work system. If you go to the flesh, you go to a work system. Please tell me you won't know that. If you go to the work, eh. if you go to the Holy Spirit, you go to a spiritual system. And that's the key. A work system of salvation or a work system of the Christian life. If it's a work system of salvation, then you've attached yourself to a different gospel. Heteros, as Al talked about the other day. Heteros, a different kind of gospel. What would that be? Works. Listen, Acts the 15th chapter, they believe that Je they, here's their gospel. Believe that Je Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead. Believe it and be circumcised and you will be saved. No, you won't. Oh, no, you won't. That's the first church conference, and they settled that theologically. They, they settled it in the 15th chapter, verse 11. You're saved by grace, by faith alone. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself is a gift of God. Can't add anything to believe. You can't add anything to the work of Christ on the cross. You can't add anything to the work of Christ on the cross. When he died on that cross, he said, Tetelestai, in the perfect tense, it means the work is finished. He spoke that to God. The work is finished that he'd come to accomplish. Can't add anything to it, people. Can't add anything. It was for freedom. Now, here's for you and I why you got to be the doer, not just the hearer. You got to bring that faith cycle to completion. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing. That's an imperative. It's a present imperative. That's a standing command, literally. Keep standing firm and do not be, no, it's a negative with another imperative. In other words, these are diabolically opposed. These are two. Here's a, a pr present imperative. Here is a negative. This is a danger sign. When he says it's for freedom of Christ, set us free. Keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called, in Galatians, you were called to freedom. Therefore, uh, uh, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. That's what Paul's been talking about. But through love serve one another. But if, that's a first class condition. If it's true there, it's true in the then. If, uh, if you bite and devour one another, take care. Take care, because what's going to happen? If you bite and devour, you become a cannibal. 
It all starts with biting. Devour is consuming. They start with your arm, and then we'll take a leg and an ear. You know, it just depends how choicey we are for our meal. But listen, the bottom line is what happens? What happens? The other person is what? Consumed. Listen, he says, stop biting to devour one another. Take care that you are not consumed by one another. So much for the angelic war and Satan. He's on furlough because we're eating each other. And so it is. Well, faith cycle. That's the bottom line, people. Let's have a word of men, uh, prayer, and the men will take the offering. We'll take a break. We'll come back the second hour. Now, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your love and mercy and grace. We thank you for the word of God. Father, it's, uh, we want to bring the word of God out of, out of the learning experience into the doing, not just hearers, but doers of it. Go through that faith cycle that the, we can see the perfect law of liberty free us and change us into the image and likeness of Christ. It is our goal. I pray, Father, the offering as it's been given generously by grace that we would be wise stewards of it to reach a lost world for God, Christ with the gospel. In his name we've prayed. Amen.